Alright, so good afternoon. Um, sorry for the slight delay. Yeah. It just disclaimer for a while. Uh, I'm not feeling that well, so my voice mungkin. Uh, but can you hear me? Can you hear Yes, okay. My voice mungkin hopefully sound clear lah. Eh. But anyway, uh, let's continue with topic two. Eh. Topic two of uh, financial management. Okay, so for today, so we will discuss um, the financial statements and ratio analysis. So first of all, we will recap. Okay, we will recap the types of documents at the, the type of statements that we will use for our analysis. Okay, so that's why we have the 2.1 and 2.2, which is the balance sheet and also income statement. And then we will go straight to the financial ratios analysis. Okay, so here you will see <clears throat> uh, multiple uh, multiple types of uh, financial ratios categories. Okay, we, you will see later on we will have five categories of financial ratios. Okay, and every category too will have multiple ratios under each one. And lastly, we will go through the limitations, even, even though it is quite important um, for our financial ratio analysis. But obviously, every tools always have disadvantages. Okay, so we will discuss a bit about the limitations. So key financial statements represent a raw material for financial analysis. Okay, so for you guys, um, I'm not sure whether you've seen in the uh, my guru or not uh, the the assignments. So we have uh, one assignment that you need to uh, do uh, financial ratio analysis. So therefore, you need to go through or you need to find your own raw material of the data. Okay, what kind of raw material? As I said before, lah, we have two uh, documents. Okay, the balance sheets and also the income statements. So the balance sheets, okay, nowadays, eh, nowadays, if you go through financial reports, it also has uh, a different name, an alternative name, which is known as uh, the statement. Eh? Oh. Financial position. Statement of financial position. So this is the alternative name or more commonly known nowadays. Okay, so if you go through annual reports, okay, you'll see it is called the statement of financial position. Okay, so the balance sheet or the statement of financial position basically will be the snapshot of the company. So by looking at this particular statement, okay, we can see already the distribution of their assets, distribution of their liabilities and obviously the equities. So from there, we can conclude a certain things in situ. Right, I think you've learned or yeah, you you know how to prepare at least when you done your accounting. I, I'm not sure, business accounting maybe. Right, uh, the next one, okay, besides balance sheets, the second statement that we will go through is the income statement or the profit and loss accounts. Okay, sometimes it's simply known as PNL. This one, profit and loss accounts, PNL. So for the balance sheets, okay, we will go through in detail later on, eh, but as I said earlier, it's a snapshot. Eh? So for income statement, uh, it is basically the movement between two balance sheets. So meaning uh, the current year against the previous year's uh, balance sheets. So the movement. And you want to see in the form of profits. So therefore, okay, under the income statement or the PNL accounts, we will list down every revenues. So this is our inflows. All the incoming monies, okay, come from revenues. 
and we will record also the outflow as I in close and outflows. Okay, so outflows in the in the form of expenses. So when we differentiate between the revenues and also the expenses, we will know at the end of the year whether this company has profit or maybe loss, okay, depending on their accounts. So if they have more revenues as compared to the expenses, obviously they will get profits. Okay, but if it's the other way around, meaning if the revenue is less than the expenses, okay, great mass like kurang daripada duit keluar, right? Inflows is less than outflows, then the com the company might suffer losses of the year. Okay. And on top of these two, okay, the balance sheets and income statement, we actually have in total eh, five different types of documents. Here we have balance sheets, uh, the first one, and we have income statement, and the third here is the cash flow statements. Okay, if uh, the income statement or the PNL is the movement between two balance sheets in the, in the form of profits for cash flow statements, it's actually in the form of cash. Still between two years of balance sheets, but we want just to focus on the cash. Okay, just to let you know, cash flow statement will be taken care of later when we do the next topic. Okay, topic number three later on. I will guide you in how to prepare the cash flow statements. Okay, but for this particular topic, topic number two, financial ratio analysis, we will not prepare any documents. Okay, we just focus on the ratios and the statements will be given to you. Okay, if we talk about uh, we saw uh, or final, okay, but for assignments, you have to find your own income statements and also balance sheets. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on to the first document. Okay, to the first document, which is the balance sheet at the statement of financial position. Okay, so in the balance sheet, it indicates the firm's, uh, the firm's financial position. Okay. Has the name statement of financial position at yeah? at one point in time. Okay, usually the last day of the calendar or the fiscal year. Okay, just to let you know, when we set the last day of calendar, it doesn't necessarily mean the thirty first of December. Yes, most of the company may end their financial year at thirty first of December, two thousand whatever lah, two thousand twenty one, twenty two whatever. Okay, but not necessarily for all. Okay, majority may be yes, but some of them may end their financial year at 30th of June. Some may be during 31st of March. Okay, some may be September, 30th of September. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter which one. Eh? As long as they, the whole statement will consist of a one whole year period of data. So meaning kalau dia punya financial year end 31st of December, so meaning their first data will be from the 1st of Jan. Okay, the previous year. Ataupun, the, sorry, not the previous year. Uh, 1st of Jan for that particular year until 31st of December. So to complete the whole 365 days uh, documents. Okay, so similarly lah, some company yang ends 30th of June, for example. So meaning the data is from uh, last year. July, maybe. Okay, until 30th of June, for that particular year. Okay, so the data must consist of one whole year's document. So in the balance sheet, it will summarize all the firm's resources, okay, in the form of assets, <clears throat> and it balance against two sides. Okay, kalau you pernah tengok accounts before this, huh? when we said the traditional balance sheet, eh? We'll have two sides. We have assets here on site. And it will be balanced by liabilities. Okay, ataupun debt as any debt. And equity. The equity. So the total here and this side will be the same. Kalau sini XXX, here will be XXX. Bring it. Okay. So the value of assets, the total assets must be balanced by 
the debts and also equity. So what does it mean? So if you have a certain amount of values for assets, okay, we must know how this assets being financed ataupun how this asset being purchased. Okay, we simply uh, cannot have assets without have any, you know, source of uh, funding for that. Okay, so in business, okay, every worth of assets must be balanced either, yeah, I will put the list in put in my guru. Yeah, uh, just to let you know, previously I let uh, the recording in the um, dalam one folder, okay. I let uh, one one folder uh, of recorded sessions. So so far we've done two sessions, kan? And oh, I just found out that from my guru, I tak sure you dah tengok tak dalam web conferencing. There's one section for you to uh, see the videos directly. You don't have to download lah, you just a link, kan? And I've uploaded there as well. Kejap lagi kalau saya sempat, I, I show you. I tak sure you have the same same view or not as mine lah, eh? but I will share with you my view of my guru that I shared the videos. Maknanya kat, kat link tu, you just... Sebab I, I re-upload the videos in YouTube juga sebenarnya. And the link I share dekat situ. So instead of you have to download atau you have to view the webex ni kan, uh, alternatively, there's a YouTube link via my Google. So later on, uh, after I have finished certain section, yeah, we go through that later. But yeah, I share every time. So yeah, so every asset too must be, the source of fund must come from either your own money. Okay, kalau your own money, your, it will be under equity. Okay, or if you have to borrow from someone else, you will be under liabilities. Okay, so every information will be recorded. Okay, and therefore these values between the two will be balanced out. It must be balanced out. But again, as I said, because this is not accounting, yeah, this is finance. So we are more focused on the analysis. So you don't have to worry whether the accounts will be balanced or not because the documents will be pre presented to you, you know, with a balanced account. So you don't, you don't have to worry about creating the documents. Okay, so this is the equation that you have to remember when we talk about uh, statement of financial positions or uh, uh, the balance sheets. Eh? So here we have the assets, here the assets. So assets represents uh, things that we have, okay, things that we have. Uh, either, like I said, uh, either we purchase it by cash or even we finance it, okay? Every information will be recorded, okay? And the values must be based on current values. So meaning uh, some of the assets may have depreciated in terms of values, okay? Let's, let's say if the company has company cars, okay? Create a company, eh? So the value of the assets will depreciate every year. So we have to record according to that particular year. So meaning for the assets, uh, if it has depreciation, so we have to take out the depreciation as a uh, value. <coughs> okay. And for the other side, okay. This, like I said, uh, the section where we can find how the assets being funded or being financed. Okay, either liabilities, as I said earlier, this is the debt section, hutang, or using the owner's equity, this is own money. Okay, and if you remember or not, doesn't matter. And under the section of assets, we will split this into two sections. We have number one, current assets, and we will also have uh, fixed, sometimes known as non-current asset. So what's the difference between current and fixed? Okay, uh, the current and fixed, uh, the difference would be in the form of maturity. 
or how fast it can be converted into cash. Okay, for current assets, okay, this is all short term assets, meaning assets that can be converted into cash uh, within one year. Okay, so here definition here, current asset here, can be converted in cash less than one year. Okay, anything less than one year, we will record it under assets. So what we have under assets, eh, sorry, under current assets specifically, yeah. So obviously we have cash. Okay, cash will be parked under current assets. Okay, because cash will be the most liquid assets that a company can have. Can have like, okay, uh, cash. So besides cash, we will also have uh, items like um, Receivable, account receivable, I click as near. Current asset, yeah. We have cash. We have uh, account receivable. Okay, so account receivable is the amount of uh, income that yet to be converted into cash because uh goods or services that we sell to our customers but the customer haven't paid yet okay we sell on credit basis okay let's say lah, i provide uh services to a client okay and the amount of revenues should be uh ten thousand ringgit for example but uh my client will pay me next month for example ten thousand ringgit it's not immediately Right, so that 10,000 will be parked under account receivable. It's not under cash yet because I haven't received the cash yet. Okay, the transaction happened. I gave my services to the client, but the client haven't paid me yet. So that 10,000 will be parked under account receivable. Okay, and since the, uh, the, the client will pay me next month, so within one year, right? So therefore, I will attack the under account receivable. Okay, but once they pay me cash, okay, then that money will be go into cash account. Okay, so account receivable need basically amount owed to the company from their clients. Okay, so that's account receivable. One other thing, we will also have uh, so yeah, inventories, inventories stocks so if a company involved in productions manufacturing or even uh, involved in retails for example they purchase stocks okay to to keep as as part of their operations so that stocks ataupun inventories will be parked under current assets as well okay and one more here maybe in the form of uh we call them as prepaid expenses okay so prepaid expenses is basically um, expenses that you have paid up front in advance okay so for example i would like to use rental for example if the company rents a, an office okay they rent an office but let's say now it's in march right but the company's policy always pay one year rental upfront for example okay so the amount of rental from april until december will be parked under prepaid expenses okay even though yeah like i said it's paid in advance that amount of money is considered under assets because the expenses haven't happened yet actually okay so therefore it will be parked under prepaid expenses okay so all of these will be under current assets and the similar elements between all all will be converted into cash or uh, will be redeemed within one year okay mature within one year next we have fixed assets or non-current assets so anything more than one year will be parked under uh, non-current assets so here we will have a lot of uh, assets that needs to be financed usually lah. needs to be acquired more than one year 
So here for fix. Items like uh, motor vehicles. Um, plant. And equipment. Uh, machineries. Okay. All will be here. Land. And building. any property okay and all of this usually we will acquire them more than one year okay motor vehicles uh yarang company we pay cash usually they will take a financing and that financing will be more than one year <clears throat> and the value also will be uh considered under fixed assets okay so therefore when we add current and fix we will get the total assets Right, the total assets. So all of these will have values. Okay, so let's say if I add everything that I have under current and fixed, I have one million. As I can, I have one million worth of <coughs> total assets. Automatically, we know the liabilities and equity side will be one million as well. It will be one million. Okay, cuma the distribution either. Heavier on the liability sides or even and on equity sides, depending on company. Okay. So for liabilities, okay, for liabilities, uh, we have two uh, categories as well under liabilities. Eh? So okay. So for the second side, kita ada. Current liabilities. Okay, similar like assets, eh, we will have current liabilities as well. Okay, current juga lah. For asset, we have current assets. For liability, we have current liabilities. <coughs> and the time frame will be the same. Okay, kalau assets tadi, item that can be converted to cash within one year. But for liabilities, it means that the debts or the liabilities will mature within one year. And we have to settle our debts <clears throat> in short term basis in one year's time. So what kind of items that we have? Example eh, for current liabilities. <clears throat> besides, uh, sorry, not besides. The opposites of <coughs> account receivable. We have account payable. Okay, hello. Uh, assets we have account receivable if you remember i mentioned earlier account receivable means we do our sales our customer haven't paid us yet okay customer owes us money as a business <clears throat> so for liabilities is the other way around meaning you purchase something from your let's say suppliers but you haven't paid the suppliers yet so you are the one who owe money now okay hence the liability like when you said liability meaning we owe someone right Kalau assets tadi, kalau receivable, meaning people owe us money. Okay, so this is the other way around. <clears throat> so account payable means uh, amount owed to other people, usually suppliers. Lah. Okay, we have account payables. Also, we may have notes payable. Okay, notes payable, <clears throat> it is basically short term loans. You may have Short term loans with banks, for example, <clears throat> and these loans will mature within one year. <coughs> okay, so the, that's not payable. And the third one, okay, maybe uh, the tagas ni. We if we have prepaid expenses or current liabilities, um, we have uh, accrued. accrued expenses <clears throat> so what does it mean by accrued again this is the opposite of prepaid for prepaid earlier i mentioned about rental whereby company pay upfront <clears throat> the expenses but for accrued it means that we owe uh, people's money again so meaning here if i use rental again as, a, as an example <clears throat> now 
this is much like i said uh, maybe accrued expenses means we haven't paid the rental from january until now so we owe three months worth of rental for example so that will be parked under accrued expenses okay so that's current liabilities okay remember the rule for current liabilities <coughs> amount owed usually mostly owed to other people are eh? and we must have to pay them within one year so if we owe people and we have to pay more than one year it will be parked under the other types of liability which is known as long term <coughs> long term liability So for long-term liabilities, like I said, like anything that <coughs> owe to other people and have to pay within, um, sorry, more than one year, ia akan masuk dalam kategori lah. <coughs> we have um, bank loans, example. What else? Bond. <coughs> Mortgages, mortgage. <clears throat> so these are some example lah. Uh, higher purchase. <clears throat> so all these are considered as long term liability. <clears throat> you bear with me one second, yeah. I know I'm I I have I my throat quite dry. Just give me one second. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> so that's uh, liabilities, yeah. The liabilities. So we have one more part, which is under owner's equity. So owner's equity all obviously will be under the liabilities. So sepatutnya kat bawah ni, but I don't have space to write. So it's supposed to be down here. But for owner's equity, we don't have any categories. Okay, we don't have like uh, the difference between current and long term, for example. So everything will be listed under <clears throat> honest equity. So contoh eh, for equity. You will see later on uh, in the form of 
capital, for example. Refit. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Yeah, uh, can you please um uh, repeat again about the owner's equity? I mean, what what under it? So for uh, owner's equity, it is basically everything contributed by the owners. Okay, so the contribution from owners will be parked under equity. And under owner's equity, there will be no categories. They just have a different items here. Okay, so for example, number one is capital. So capital basically comes from owners when you contribution when they want to start their business. Capital, modal, eh? Cap modal, so capital. So that's number one. And sometimes the, the business needs to expand. Okay, they need to expand and somehow they will have to uh, produce or they have to sell shares in order to get more capital. Okay, so... The outside out or the external funds can come from two uh, two sources. Lah. Number one is known as preferred preferred stock, eh? the preferred shares. Okay, and the other one would be from the common stock. Okay, there are two sources here lah, where we talk about stocks or shares. Whereby uh, investor from outside of the business can invest in this company and own a certain percentage of shares. Okay, and still, when they become the shareholders, obviously, they are considered under the owner's equity. Lah. Right, and the last one, okay, the last one here is actually, I put it down here, it's known as retained earning. So, retained earnings means uh, the profits, okay, that the, the company put aside okay, every year as a form of, of a new capital. So meaning, let's say, for example, this year, the company will, uh, earned 1 million net profits, for example. Yeah. So from that 1 million, maybe a portion they will pay dividend to the shareholders, but they have uh, leftovers from that particular activity. So that amount, they can masuk dalam retained earnings. And this retained earnings will accumulate every year. So, the more profit they earn, okay, and they keep aside a lot every year, for example, so the more retaining they will have in the future. Okay, so these are all under equity. Okay, so for equity, we don't have categories lah, like, like assets or even liabilities. So, everything will be, will be uh, listed here individually. Okay, this is some example of it lah. Okay, so actually, all of these, I have the notes in the next one. I got double. Next, next slide. Actually, lah, I said, kat sini, the next slide shows the general format. Okay, but bear in mind, eh, when I set uh, the general format, kat sini, <clears throat> you will not see this format anymore in the actual statements from the annual reports because um, the format has changed. Okay, but for our case, we will still use that format, especially when we talk about exams, because of the uh, simplicity and also basically the reason is because of the space usage. Lah. Because if it's in actual format, it will take one whole page just for one statement. All right. So to because of space reason during the exams, for example, then we still use the general format. Lah. Right. So here, the general format indicates that assets will be on the one side and on the other side will be liabilities and equity, just like what I did here. Bear with me a second. Like this, like. Assets on one side, on the left, and then liabilities and equity on the other side. Okay, and in terms of the liquidity, they are currently list from the least liquid on top until the, the, the most hardly to be converted uh, nearer to the bottom. Okay, so things that uh, yang paling liquid you will put on top lah, like cash, uh, the asset, uh, current receivable, tapi yang, yang harder to convert into cash will be put at the bottom, right? <clears throat> Similar like liabilities as well. So anything due earlier will be put on top, so due later will be uh, nearer to the bottom. 
So this is how possibly looks like. Lah. Okay. Assets on the left hand side, and then it's split between current and fix. And then we have liabilities on top, current first, and then we have the long term. Kalau kat sini sebenarnya ada, there's a long term liabilities lah. So example here, long term debt, it can be, you can add on lah, bond kat sini. It can be mortgage, I said tadi. And so on. So this is all under current, sorry, under long term liabilities. And then we have equities at the bottom. So here are the common and the preferred. And we also have retail earnings. <clears throat> okay. So total assets must be the same as the total liabilities and also equity combined. Not total liabilities alone, eh? must combine together with the equity. Okay. So here, some maybe I missed, so maybe we can recap balik lah eh. For under assets, I said tadi the first one we have cash. Okay, you boleh add cash kat sini. Okay, so we will, we have also here marketable securities. Okay, this one I tak mention tadi, marketable securities. So marketable securities uh, is basically short term investment. Okay, short term investment. And if you recall our first meeting last week, uh, we have financial markets. Kita ada dua, eh, cakap, I cakap, eh, we have the money market and capital market, whereby the money market yeah, uh, involved in short-term instruments, whereas kalau capital market, it involves long-term instruments. Okay, so marketable securities here means short-term investment in the money market. Because money markets, they can convert into cash ataupun the maturity within one year. Okay, hence the name short term tadi. So that's why they park under current assets. Okay, and the rest I think I mentioned tadi lah. The current receivable amount owed from customer to us. The inventories, okay, the stocks. And then the prepaid expenses I gave. Example, the rental that you pay up front. Okay, nampak the word prepaid ni just imagine like your mobile phone tu lah. If you have prepaid kan, you bayar uh, uh, earlier. And then you use sampai... <clears throat> it's limit and then you reload balik next month for example uh, so that's prepaid uh. you pay first then you utilize it kalau yang bill you 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 use it first and then you pay it later that's bill kan so that's a cool and then uh we have fixed asset ni example tadi lah plant and machinery and then buildings i also put earlier uh, motor vehicles right and liabilities, I think everything I mentioned already, account payable, the opposite of account receivable, notes payable, which is uh, short-term bank loans, accruals or accrued expenses. Okay, number line there, there. It's accrued expenses. Okay, accrued expenses or accruals in short is basically the opposite of prepaid expenses. And the rest, I think I've, I've mentioned to you. <clears throat> okay. So your role ataupun your your objective of this because you don't have to prepare I, I mentioned that banyak kali and you don't have to worry about preparing this document because the document will be given to you okay you need to know the items you have to make you have to know by heart okay this item belongs to which category that's it okay you need to know, uh, know, know the names identify what does it mean and you know it belongs to which category that's it that's your 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 class are basically so you need to know that because like these documents everything is complete i think i mean in terms of the labeling and everything so for your assignment point you don't have to worry because everything will be displayed uh clearly okay but when we talk about finals for example or even tests or quizzes okay sometimes the labels need to list there'll be no labeling they, do, they don't put the current asset, they don't put fixed current liabilities, everything. They will lump everything together. Okay, but they will not jumble up. They will not mix uh, the position. No? They will put it nicely in order, but they will not label it. So therefore, if you don't know your, your items, you may miss categorize it into different categories. Okay, that's the only thing lah, that will affect to you. So what you need to do 
basically by reading the items ni then you know what does it mean and, and automatically you need to know where it will be it will be belong to lah which categories huh. okay so this is one uh actual example okay the name first of all is known as statement of financial position as i said tadi so you will not see any balance sheets in the uh, actual accounts because this is one example from uh, one Islamic bank in the country, Quick Finance House. So they have assets on top here. Then they have liabilities and also equity. That's new. Okay. And the, the format also not the same as the T account earlier. Kau tadi, asset kat sini. Yeah, liability and equity on the right hand side. But here, the format is more uh, vertical. Kau ni horizontal, eh? horizontal format. The T account. Here is a vertical format meaning assets on top liabilities and equity at the bottom okay they split in this manner lah. they split kata -kata -kata. this okay but the, this value and this value still remain the same okay everything will remain the same so another thing that's here eh? when we look at uh the account you will see two information okay uh number one the group punya uh, information and we also have here the bank or sometimes they use the word company lah kalau bukan bank takkan ditulis bank eh? so for other other than bank they use company lah <coughs> so uh most of the time for our calculations we will use the group punya information because the group information is more complete okay and on top of that every financial statements will have two years of information the current year and the previous year for comparison purposes okay so by looking at one financial statements okay you will have two years of information right <clears throat> so that's some tips lah, later on the team can you have to find it okay not mungkin, eh? for sure you will have to find it so the items might be different lah, because this is bank yeah so for banks that's why when you do your and that analysis later for your assignments for example i don't encourage you to do for banks okay because the items will be different because their nature of business is not the same as other companies okay uh, you will see a lot of different things lah here okay so it's quite tricky lah. Uh, nak cari. inventories start there. they don't have inventories for example want to find something they will they don't have here okay so i recommend you to pick other companies because we have thousands of companies right why you want to uh because uh for this we have belajar lah sangat eh sorry that, that other class if you are e14 maybe when you doing banking with uh paper then you will have to go through banking with your accounts later on for e14 for meaning for most of you you don't have to worry about this Okay, so that's our first statement, eh? statement of financial position or the balance sheet. Remember, we have three items, ataupun three categories. We have assets, liabilities, and also equity. Assets, we have two, current assets and current liabilities. And for, sorry, uh, for assets, we have current assets and uh, fixed assets. For liabilities, we have current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Then we have equity, okay? So all of... The items I mentioned earlier is actually here. You can you can reread value later on. Okay, what is meant by current assets, the examples, okay. And convertibility must be within one year, as I, as I mentioned earlier tadi. And usually current asset, also known as working capital. And the working capital is really important for their day-to-day -day operations. Okay, so if you don't have enough current assets, then they have problems juga. Okay, because they will not operate efficiently. So why we need to have current assets? To ensure payments. Selalunya lah, to ensure the, the nature of transaction between the company and their suppliers, okay, and their uh, landlords, for example, if they rent every, anything, let the rent uh, office ke katakan. So they need to have enough cash, enough liquid assets uh, for their operations. Okay, so that's current sets.
Then the non-current or fixed asset, as I said already, uh, <clears throat> used for longer terms. Okay, longer terms. In uh, it's quite hard to convert into cash. Uh, short term basis. So these are the example lah, equipment, land, buildings, and motor vehicles, and so on. So that's more than mentioned earlier. Yeah. So when we talk about net value, as I said, eh, the gross minus any accumulated depreciation, if any. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So, and then the other side, we have liabilities again, kita ada current tadi, as I mentioned, and the long-term liabilities. And finally, the owner's equity, lah, as I mentioned juga tadi. We have the preferred common retain and also capital. <clears throat> okay, so that's our first statement. Okay. Ingatkan balik, you don't have to worry about the formats or everything because in our case for financial statements, uh, for ratio analysis here, we don't worry about the financial statement itself. We just focus on the ratio analysis. Okay, so the first part here, 2.1, 2.2, is basically as a recap, what are the financial statements? Okay, so well, we have diverse population dalam group ni. I, I quotes of programs ada macam-macam. 80 something, I, I pun tak recall you are from which programs pun. So to be fair, I just reintroduce balik, ataupun Kalau yang tak pernah tengok, introduce to you uh, what are the financial statements, okay, and how the the statement will look like. What are the items uh, under the financial statements, and from there, but if I go straight to ratio analysis, nanti kang tak tahu macam mana nak cari all the information, okay. So that's how we go about this topic lah. Uh, look at the statement first, familiarize with it. And later on, when we want to do the ratio analysis, we know how to find the information. So after the first statement, the balance sheet, we have now the income statement. <clears throat> so for income statement, uh, the items are less as compared to the balance sheet. Because here it will list down all the revenues, as I mentioned earlier, all the inflows and also all the expenses, which is the outflows. Okay, so after we deduct the two, the income versus the expenses, then at the end of the day, at the point at the end of the year, we, we will find out whether the company have profit or loss. Okay, and similarly, like balance sheets, the items must be for one year period. Okay, and it must be consistent lah. Kalau tadi 31st December of 2021, for example, ataupun 2020 last year. <clears throat> so income statement, we have the same financial year end. Okay, sama juga lah. Kalau dia 30th of June, the income statement will be ending 30th of June as well. Okay. So here are some of the informations that you will find in an income statement, okay? So always on top for income statement, the account starts with either sales or revenues, okay? Sales or revenues, depending on companies punya operation. Some companies that involve in uh, selling goods, okay? Usually they will put sales, okay? But for companies that don't have goods, but they sell services, for example, they will put revenues, okay? But sometimes they use these two interchangeably, okay? Some other young jual goods pun letak revenues maybe, but you know the terms too, it basically inflows, okay? That come from sales, ataupun revenues lah. Okay, and it can be either by cash or using credit sales. Okay, remember that I, I bagi example for a car receivable. You do sales, Okay, but the customer haven't paid yet. Okay, the sales punya record tu already reflect here. They will be part of the revenues. 
But the cash tu mungkin tak appear lagi lah. The cash punya account tak ada tapi dia akan appear in account receivable. Okay, but from sales punya point of view, it already happened. So you need to record that. Okay, it will be part of this uh, information, sales or revenue. So under the uh, sales and revenue, the very first expenses that we need to deduct is the cost of goods sold. Okay, the cost of goods sold represent cost to produce goods or services. Okay, but sometimes if the company doesn't involve in uh, production or so manufacturing, this may be changed to cost to acquire. Okay, acquire the goods or services. Acquire to means purchase lah maybe. Okay, so if the, your company doesn't involve in manufacturing, you don't produce your own goods, but you buy from supplier before you resell it, then it will be the cost you acquire. Benda tu lah. So for example, apa example lah bagi ya. Oh, I tak on camera ni. Sekejap eh. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> I my my business eh. I I'm selling luxury wallets. Walaupun ni bukanlah luxury wallet, tapi let's say lah. This is the luxury wallet. Okay, and I sell this wallet satu unit ni to just to give for easier easier you know reference to you. Katakanlah one wallet ni hundred ringgit. Okay, satu wallet ni hundred ringgit, one hundred ringgit. So I jual satu unit. Okay, so this hundred ringgit. Per unit, I will record it under sales. So I jual 100 ringgit kan. So 100 ringgit, I will record it under sales. So kat sini, I akan letak lah 100 ringgit. Example. Okay, kalau I jual satu, kalau I jual 100, I, I multiply with 100, 100 units lah. Okay. And for this wallet, I don't produce it. Okay, I don't have factory to produce, but I, I purchase this from China, for example. And the cost is 20 ringgit. One unit, I believe 20 ringgit. Okay, so this cost to buy from China 20 ringgit, I can letak kat sini. 20 ringgit. Okay, just cost to acquire je. Doesn't involve any other, uh, any other cost. Okay, just to purchase this, it's cost me 20 ringgit. So I put there 20 ringgit lah as, 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 as my cost of goods sold. Okay. So this, sebenarnya tak nampak kat sini eh, but anyway. When you take sales and revenue and you minus the cost of goods sold kat sini, kalau I letak minus, you will receive the first level of profit. Okay. Which is known as, kat sini I letak, gross profit. Gross profit. So from this transaction, 100 ringgit I jual, and the cost I acquire it is 20 ringgit. So the gross profit for this is 80 ringgit. See, 80 ringgit. So this 80 ringgit is my gross profit. But does it mean my profit for the transaction is 80 ringgit? Not yet. We need to consider other expenses. Okay, expenses to run the business especially. Ataupun operating expenses. So after we deduct the cost of goods sold, we need to deduct other expenses, okay, which is known as operating expenses. So here, uh, I list down some lah, marketing, admin cost, uh, transportation, maybe you can add yeah, transportation, or delivery charges, kalau you, okay, you bear yourself lah, the delivery charges. Uh, storage. If you have to store, you have to pay storage. Uh, boleh tambah lagi. Uh, yang paling penting sebenarnya, employees. You have to pay for your employees and your your salary, salary for employees. Okay, so all of these are under operating expenses. So after you. Uh, Quantify individually, meaning selalunya for marketing, admin, employee, you akan ada a total amount. And you can you can quantify it into per unit basis. You can divide it. Maknanya kalau you have a total numbers and you divide by amount you, you sell, then you can get the amount. So let's say, 
the operating expenses after you quantify per unit basis is let's say 30 ringgit. 30 ringgit. So from gross profit of 80, you minus 30, you akan dapat satu lagi level of profit. Okay, which is known as uh, earning before interest and taxes. Okay, earning before interest and taxes. EBIT. Okay, this EBIT lah, bukan EBIT yang lain. And it's also known as operating profit. Kalau tadi operating expenses, so after we deduct the operating expenses, we get EBIT or operating, uh, operating profit. Okay, so 80 ringgit minus 30 ringgit. So EBIT dia is RM, 50 ringgit. Okay, so this is the second level of profit. So first we have gross. And then we, next we have operating profits. Oh, so after we get this operating profit, we are subject to pay two more expenses. Okay, next one we have interest. That's why number tadi pun, earning before I and T ni, before interest and before tax. So therefore, automatically we know lah, kalau ni earning before interest tax, maknanya kita akan ada earning yang after these two. Right, so we pay interest first, if any. So interest here refers to financing cost. So if we borrow money, we have to pay interest. So uh, company will list down this cost, financing cost, <clears throat> and after that, they will pay tax as well. So tax akan dibayar to the government. Kalau in Malaysia, they will pay via LHDN. Ataupun in English, we call them as IRB, Inland Revenue Board. Okay, we pay the government. And this uh, amount, we will uh, calculate based on, ada satu lagi level, okay, after interest. Eh. Katakanlah kat sini, the interest is, you didn't get, eh. I don't know, uh, just for the sake of calculation. Eh. We get. So you can do the next one, EBT, earning before tax. But interest dah bayar, we have earning before tax here. So we have 45 ringgit kat sini. <coughs> and then we have tax expenses. So tax expenses, it depends on company. So selalunya company dah ada dia punya tax bracket dia. Katakanlah the tax is 28% contohnya. So they have to pay lah tax to the government, 28% contoh. So after paying the tax, then they will get the final profit, which is the net income ataupun net profits. Or sometimes it's also known as uh, earning. Uh, sorry, doctor. Uh, earning after tax, yes. Uh, the EBT is yeah. gross profit minus with the interest. The interest, amount of interest. Yeah. Ah, the yeah. EBT. Oh, what was that yeah. already? What is EBT stands earning for? Earning before tax. Earning before oh, okay. tax. Yeah. So the AB, AB too is earning before? Earning before interest and taxes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. thank you. Okay, so I recap balik eh. Uh, after operating expenses, from, from gross tadi eh, from gross profit, you minus operating expenses, you get EBIT, earning before interest and taxes. Or sometimes it's known as operating profit. Okay, they don't get confused any expenses eh. EBIT, because me eh, by default lah eh. EBIT, also known as operating profit. Okay, and after we have EBIT or operating profit, we minus interest, then we get EBT, earning before tax. And then we pay tax, then we get net income, or sometimes known as net profit or also known as earning after tax. Kalau tadi earning before tax, now we have earning after tax. So why we have so many terms? Yeah, it, because we have so many books, uh, so many backgrounds, some uh, books from US, some books from UK, for example. So they have multiple terms, but it primarily means the same. Okay, so they can use interchangeably again the terms. So just get yourself uh, familiarized with net income. It's actually the same as net profit. 
is also the same as earning after tax EAT. Okay, the, this is the short formula. Earning after tax, ataupun net income ni sometimes they just letak NI. Net income. Okay, so this is our final profit. So imagine we have multiple levels of profit from gross profit to earning before interest and taxes, earning before tax, and earning after tax. Okay, so, so it will look something like this. We have revenues on top. Okay. Okay, revenues or sales and then minus the cost of goods sold. Yeah, the gross minus the operating expenses and depreciation, if any. Then we have EBIT tadi, yeah, earning before interest and taxes or operating income ataupun operating profit. And then uh, minus the interest, then you get the EBT, minus the tax, then you get the net income. Okay, sometimes the information can go further by <coughs> explaining about dividend. Okay, dividend. So after the net income, Obviously, company will uh, announce the dividend payment to the shareholders, okay? Either to the preferred shareholders or the common shareholders. So, from the income, they will pay dividends. And as I said tadi, the balance from the dividend payment will be kept in the retained earnings. Okay, retained earnings. Right? So, again, this is another uh, actual example. But again, this is quite outdated lah. 2010, I'll be income statement so they have from revenues and they deduct all the expenses at the end uh, for this company they lost lah, eh? they lost and they pay share uh, sorry they, i'm not sure whether they pay uh, dividend or not i'm not sure i think for this data yeah but again because this is a bank so the information kat dalam ni might not be similar like other companies lah, but the nature is the same from income on top and then all the outflows deduct all uh cuma dalam ni dia ada finance cost they don't have interest lah because this is Islamic bank eh? so dia bayar finance cost and then they pay tax and on top of that dia ada zakat juga for this company they pay zakat eh? so dia bayar kat sini juga and finally they get the profits or loss okay so these are the two statements that you need to familiarize with. And, <clears throat> and then I recap really, we will not have to worry about the, the format of the statements eh, because we don't prepare this. This will be given to you. Cuma, yeah, you need to know where to find the information lah, okay, when we talk about the ratio later. Okay, so before we go to the actual ratios, let's take a quick break. Okay, not so quick you got lah. Let's see, like, let's restart balik at 3.30 ya, 3.30. When we, we talk in details, okay, this is the most important part sebenarnya untuk this topic, which is the types of financial ratios. Okay, the types of financial ratios. So, let's take uh, a break until 3.30. So, then we will continue with the types of financial ratios. All right, so let's continue with the next part, eh? which is the financial ratios. It just lets you to let you know that you will see later on we have five categories of ratios. Okay, five categories, eh? the liquidity, we have activity ratios, we have um, yeah, liquidity, activity, uh, leverage ratios. Profitability ratios and lastly market ratios. So we have five five categories. So first, what is financial ratios is all about? Okay. So financial ratios involve uh, analyzing of data. Eh? The data that we will analyze again based on the two documents we we've gone through earlier, which is the balance sheet income statement. And we use financial ratios to analyze the current performance. Okay, so as is basis, uh, past performances. Okay, this is what we, you, you will do later on, past performances. And also based on expected performance, ataupun pro forma or what if statements. 
Okay, for this part, we will discuss in the next chapter, chapter number three or topic number three, which is we do forecasting or again pro forma. Okay, but for us, most of the time, okay, we will discuss this part, the past performances, because current performance, we don't have the data. This is usually done for uh, for internal people, for for those in uh, inside the company, then they can do the current performance, current analysis. But for us, who will get only the data once they publish it, okay, we just can analyze past performances. Okay, and this will indicate the relationship between the, the two financial statements I mentioned earlier and used by a lot of parties involved. We have the investors, investors very much interested to know their financial ratios. Uh, the managers, which is from the internal sites, and usually, like I said, lah, managers can use the current and in fact, past performances as well. And any other relevant parties who are interested to know, okay, their statement of financial positions and also their performance. And this performance can be, can, can be derived from uh, the, uh, the, the income statement, income statement. And through the analysis, okay, one is able to tell whether the company's financial standing and financial performance is in good condition or not. Okay, and very important for the internal managers to, to check their trends, okay, to identify their strengths and weaknesses as well. Okay, so from internal point of view, when they do the financial ratios, they can uh, take actions, lah, take appropriate actions, whether how to correct any deficiencies or how to improve uh, their performance in order to ensure they maximize their shareholders. Well. If you remember last week, when I had mentioned a bit about their their goal of a, as a company eh, is to improve the shareholders as well. So these are the five categories I mentioned earlier. Liquidity, leverage, activity, profitability, and also market ratios. Okay, so... Bear in mind, eh, walaupun we have five categories, in total, you will see the ratios can go up to maybe 23, 25 ratios altogether. Okay, so a lot of ratios. So bear with me and you have to, you have to know juga lah, all the relevant ratios. Uh, and we will go one by one. So let's go for the first one, liquidity. Eh? So liquidity ratios. So we want to know how the company uh, uh, positions whether liquid enough or not. Okay, so this liquidity ratio to measure uh, the the liquidity or the availability of the firm's liquid resources. So if you remember earlier, when we said liquid, we want to ensure that their current assets is uh, the availability of current assets is enough. Okay, for their operations. Okay, if you remember, I had mentioned about working, working capital. Working capital or current assets okay so this part the current asset must be sufficient okay in order for them to pay yeah current and maturing liabilities so again kalau kita tengok current and maturing liabilities we know this is about current liabilities so in short when we talk about liquidity we want to compare between current assets against current liabilities whether it's sufficient or not so as a basic rule the higher the ratio, the better, because uh, the higher the ratio indicates they have higher ability to pay these current liabilities. Okay. However, excessive liquidity may indicate too much investment in current assets. Okay. Right. So obviously, uh, if it's too excessive, lah, okay, so then it can be inefficient. However, the, the most important part, if it's not excessive, eh, but if it's low, so if it, if the ratio is low, okay, so there's a possibility of this part, which um, there's an insolvency risk, meaning there's a possibility that the company cannot pay the debt, short-term debts, and therefore they might have problems, okay, for their short-term liabilities. Okay, so here, there are, there are a few hints. Eh? We are talking only about current assets, and current liabilities okay current assets and current liabilities so therefore under liquidity ratios even though we will have three different ratios later on every ratios will revolve around current assets and current liabilities only okay current assets and current liabilities only 
So we have three ratios under liquidity. Okay, we have current ratio, quick ratio, and also net working capital. Okay, so as a hint, I mentioned that yeah, when we talk about liquidity, it's all about current asset and current liability. And our first ratio, in, in fact, using the word current, you got guys in Okay, current ratio. Here you will see all information. Kita hanya guna current assets and current liabilities only. Okay, it's not about uh, fixed asset. It's not about long-term liability. It's not about equities, and it's not about all information under income statement. Okay, so current ratio involves current asset and current liability, and both current asset and current liability, we will find it in the balance sheet only. So for these categories, we just use one document, one statement, which is the balance sheet. Okay, can you remember that? Right? We have assets, liabilities, equity again. So we just focus on the currents, right? Only on the currents. So for the first one, current ratio. Okay, it measures the short-term solvency and indicates the extent to which claims of short-term creditors are covered by current assets. Okay, so average is about 1.5 times. Okay, so the formula is, okay, for every ratios, okay, there are two important information. You will see the formula. This is the formula, basically. Current assets divided by current liabilities. And for every ratio, there's one statement at the bottom here. Okay, so this is the explanation or how to interpret the information. Okay, how to interpret. So for this example, under current ratio, the answer will be in times. Okay, berapa kali, how many in times. And the higher the ratio, okay, it indicates higher ability to pay short-term obligations on time. Okay, so the higher, the better, as I, as I mentioned before. So when you do comparison, okay, those with higher ratio indicates that company has better ability, okay, to pay short-term obligations on time. Okay, so formula wise, I recap, eh? it's current assets divided by current liabilities. Okay, just bear with me one second. Eh? So for my notes, ni, if you go through later on, nanti kat belakang ni, you will see an example, ada satu example with answers kat belakang ni. Okay, just bear with me one second. Lah. Okay, <coughs> macam ni lah. There's one example uh, with all informations. Okay, both uh, balance sheet income statement and then there's how to calculate the ratios. Okay. okay, but for our exercise ataupun for my illustration purposes, I will not use that one. That one you can try on your own. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, I've uploaded this in my guru as well. Uh, as an exercise, okay. <clears throat> so, let me introduce to you how the question would look like when we talk about financial ratios. So, every question will give you both statements, okay, statement of financial position or the balance sheet, and also income statement, or also known as statement of financial performance. Okay, both ended 31st December 2017, okay, summer. So there's some uh, introduction of the question as any. Right, and as I said tadi, uh, the question doesn't provide you with the labeling. You tak tulis ni current assets or fixed asset. Yeah, your test or your final will look similar like this. Very much similar, but not this exactly same question now, obviously, yeah, but you will look something like this. Okay. In nampak kat sini, there's no current asset, fixed asset, there's no current liabilities, uh, long-term liabilities or even equity kat sini, labeling tak ada. And uh, very straightforward uh, information about income statement lah from sales, revenues, until EAT, earning after tax. Okay. Right. And for these ratios, usually they will ask you first to calculate the ratios. And then you analyze. Okay, so that's why in the ratio earlier, 
there's a formula and then ada explanation kat bawah tu. So for analysis part yang B ni, you can use the word or the statement that I I provided you with in the notes. Okay, to explain. Okay, so let's look or let's focus on our very first ratio just now, which is the current ratio. Okay, bear with me. So current ratio dia, the formula is current assets divided by current liabilities. And as I said before, current asset and current liabilities can be found in the statement of financial position or the balance sheets. Okay, so your task is to identify which are the items are current assets and which are the items are current liabilities. And then find the total of each categories. Okay. okay, so on the left hand side we have assets. No, the total is four million. Okay, four million. So total liabilities and equity, also known as total claims, also four million. Oh, million ke berapa ratus ni? Oh, million ni. Eh? Yeah, that's a, an error instead of comma, dia tak full stop lah. Eh? It's supposed to be 4 million ni. Eh? Okay, anyway. Uh, if you remember tadi, for current assets, I give you some examples. We know cash is current assets. Marketable securities is current assets. Account receivables, also current assets. Inventories. Also current assets. Okay, net plants and equipment. Okay, if you recall that the net plants and equipment is part of fixed assets. So therefore, our current assets ends until inventory. So as I said, eh, dia takkan dia takkan jumble up. Dia akan you know list it in order. Cuma dia tak label. They will not label them. <clears throat> okay, so you don't have to worry about identifying information. So here. The total assets, sorry, the total current asset will be 30 plus 600,000 plus 30 <coughs> plus 400. So 1860, okay, 1.86 million. I have to write it here. Right? 1860 plus 600,000. Ni H, H boleh tulis. Sorry. Okay, sini boleh tulis ni. Sorry ya. Eh. Okay, so this information, this is all current assets. And after I add all this, all of this, I get one. 860,000. Okay, 1.86 million basically. Okay, so kalau kita add 2.14, then we get 4 million in total. Lah. So this is our current sets. <coughs> On the right hand side, we need to identify our current liabilities as well. Okay, so if you recall again, for current liabilities, we have account payable, accrued expenses, notes payable. And here they have others, okay, ataupun other current liabilities. And then, then the next one, they have long-term, common, and retaining. So we know already yang long-term is long-term liabilities. So our current as current liabilities will be these four items only. Okay, from account payables until other current liabilities. So in total, we have 460 plus 150. Plus two seventy plus two hundred. So in total, the current liabilities will, will be one point zero eight million. Okay, one point zero eight million. So that's it. That's your current assets and current liabilities. Okay. So if you want to calculate the ratio, listen. Bear with me. I buka satu lagi file. Okay. So, if you want to calculate number one, eh, current ratio.
shit like one year but anyway that's the Okay, so the formula for current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. So these current assets, we have one, 160,000, and our current liabilities is 1.080. So it's zero minus 1080. So here we have 1.72 times or kalau kita tak boleh tak nak guna symbol can put times okay so that's how we solve uh, our ratio <coughs> by finding two information okay every ratio memang macam tu ya you just need to multiply je. or sometimes you have to multiply and then you Sorry, you have to divide and then you get the answer. Or sometimes when you divide and then you have to multiply with the 100 to get the percentage, for example. Itu je. Okay. So what does it mean by 1.72 times? Okay. So I go back to here. Okay. Kita dah dapat ratio tadi. Current assets divided by current liabilities. 1.72 times. And for ratios, okay, just let you know. Ataupun... Uh, to stress this information, every ratios, okay, we cannot uh, analyze independently. So meaning the information will be less useful or less uh, relevant if it's in on its own. Okay, so every ratios must be compared. You have to compare against another indicators. So you can compare either company A versus company B, or you can compare between one company, but two different years, for example. Compare between 2019 versus 2020, uh, for example. Okay, so for this question just now, anybody, maybe I thought indicates earlier. Uh, this question, <coughs> give us this industry average ratio. So this will be our benchmark. Okay, this will be our benchmarks. Okay, so this is not the answers. Eh? These are the benchmark. So our task is first to calculate the ratio for this sunrise, which is the company. And kita dapat 1.72 tadi for the uh, current ratio. And then next one, we have to compare against this industry average. Which one is better, sunrise company or industry average? Okay, so here, if we focus on current ratio just now, the sunrise company is 1.72, but the industry average of the company, uh, industry average is 2.0 times. So what does it mean? Okay, uh, sunrise company, at the sunrise corporation has lower ratio as compared to the industry average. So if you go to this, information again it indicates that the higher the better right so higher ratio reflects ability to pay short term obligations on time so in our case earlier <coughs> sunrise has lower okay lower score as compared not 1.5 lah 1.72 tadi kan so how to translate this to information ataupun to our explanation so i i boleh letak kat sini to conclude eh sunrise corporation Okay. We are talking about ability kat sini eh. You boleh letak si Sarah uh, Corporation as A lower. Sebab the score is lower than 2.0 tadi kan. For ability. B. Short term. Patients on time as compared to the industry 
average. So give me something like this. Okay, so the, the, the gist of the information is all in here. Okay, so my tambah, the company, okay, Sunrise Corporation, which is the company that we analyze, has a lower ability because the score is lower, right? Tapi katakanlah kalau the score is more than 2, dapat 2.1 katakan. So it has a higher ability lah. Ataupun better ability, right? To pay short-term obligations on time as compared to the, but kita compare against industry average kan, so kita letaklah as compared to the industry average. Tapi kalau you compare dengan another company, you letaklah another company here. Okay, so rise again, sunset, contoh je. Sunset corporation, katakan. Alright. <coughs> so that's how we do analysis. So we need to do for this ratio calculations and analysis for all relevant uh, ratios. What When I said relevant, it means, okay, bear with me, we go back to the question. The question specify are the ratios, doesn't it? We have one, two, are the eight ratios mentioned here. So that's why the question kata, calculate the relevant financial ratios. So when, we, when the question said relevant, it doesn't mean all ratios yang kita akan belajar later on, you will have to calculate. You just calculate whatever mentioned here sahaja. So, kebetulan current ratio is here. Okay, so we calculate lah current ratio. <clears throat> so, that's how we utilize the ratios and also uh, the, the explanation down here. Okay, ada soalan tak? Because once you know the, the technique ni, then we, we can go the rest quite quite fast juga lah sebab every, every ratios you will see more or less the same uh, technique lah in terms of technique and the ratio obviously it will be different from one to another but how we tackle uh, the questions will be similar meaning always kita akan calculate the ratio first and then immediately after that we comment on the performance whether better or worse as compared to our benchmark benchmark rate so most of the time, eh, I, I can see that for exams especially, uh, you can compare against industry average. <clears throat> but for your assignment later on, <clears throat> you will compare against another company, another competitor from the same industry. Okay, kalau you dah tengok soalan lah. Eh. As for you all know, uh, the question for, for the assignment will be yang group assignment yang yang dah dipost dalam my guru tu lah eh. uh, it will be the same throughout all all groups okay, because it will be conducted by the coordinator which is Dr. Rusliza so the question will be the same cuma kita akan ada different additional assignment individual assignments memang tak ada siapa tak ada group lagi kot I, I tak, <coughs> I'm not sure whether you've uh, saya tak ada guru, saya tak, saya tak, saya tak apa? Saya tak formally introduce you, okay, you need to do the assignment now, no. Sebab soalan tu bukan saya post, saya tu from Dr. Rusliza. Okay, but you only can do that assignment once you finish this topic. <coughs> Sebab so, for us, you, 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 you don't know how to do it. But anyway, relating to the question ataupun relating to the <coughs> the format of the question in terms of how to do it, any question tak? Okay, kalau tak ada, let's move on to the next one, yeah. So, this is the first one, current ratio. So, for the second types of uh, liquidity, we are still in liquidity, yeah. The first category baru ni. After current, we have quick ratio. Okay, quick ratio. Also known as acid test ratio. So, this is the alternative name, there. Yeah? Acid test ratio. Okay, it's quite similar like uh, current ratio earlier. Okay, whereby it uh, measures the firm's ability to pay short-term obligations. <clears throat> but here, uh, we will deduct, we will minus one other uh, 
uh, information, which is the inventories. Okay, hence the formula, kalau you nampak, it's quite similar like earlier. We have current assets, we have current liabilities. But for the current assets, we minus the inventory. We don't take into account inventory as part of current assets. And once we have inventory less in our current assets, obviously our quick ratio will be lower than the current ratio. Lah. Okay, and that, that's why ratio with less than one is not uncommon here. Okay, so in terms of the explanation, it will be more or less the same as before. The answer will be in times. Okay, your explanation pun lebih kurang sama, which is uh, reflect ability to pay short-term obligation, but we add uh, another element, which is without relying on inventories, because we deduct on inventories. Okay, so if we go back to this question again, ni tadi. Okay, so if you recall, this current assets includes inventories worth 400,000. Okay, so if we have to calculate peak ratio, oh, ni katakan, if you want to calculate quick ratio, eh, so it would be current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. Okay. Our current liabilities will be the same as before. The current liabilities yang belas ni tadi ya, on this side, will remain the same. 0 0.080. Zero. Okay, so you don't have to calculate one small. You just plug the figure just because it's the same. Okay, but this side will be different lah because uh, the information is current assets minus inventories. Okay, so our earlier current asset was 1860 eh. Ini 1860. But we want to minus inventories kat sini. So we left with 1460. Okay, so why less 400,000? Because we deduct inventories from our current assets. So 1860 minus 400,000. So we left with 1460. So 1460 divided by 1080. So we left with 1.0. Five times. Okay, so this is another hint. Okay, katakanlah during the test or during the final. You cannot recall, okay, the punya answer ni will be in times or in percentage. Okay, if you are not sure, go back to the question. The question already indicates here. Either the answer in times, either the answer in days, or some maybe in percentage. Like so. <coughs> So you don't have to worry lah. We have some uh, hint kat sini. So for current, uh, sorry, for quick ratio, the answer also in times. And uh, industry average is 1.8. Okay, so this is another thing. I lupa nak mention tadi. Eh. When, we, when we do the analysis part, always comment on the company that we are analyzing. Like this lah. The question asks us to calculate the relevant ratios for Sunrise Corporation. So therefore, our 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 point will be always on Sunrise Corporation. Doesn't matter whether they have better or even worse performance. So we don't compare. Kata industry average is better than Sunrise. No, eh? Because we are not commenting on industry average. We are commenting on Sunrise. So therefore, your first starting point must be about Cyrus Corporation. And then we comment whether there has better or worse performance as compared to the industry average. Okay, so even though, again, quick ratio is worse, okay? so, but industry average is higher. So the higher, the better. So in this case, quick ratio for Sunrise is lower than industry average. So therefore, they have a worse performance. Okay, but we will comment based on Sunrise Corporation. So Sunrise Corporation. Again, sama lah kat atas has a ability to pay short term obligations on time. Okay, but remember eh, this is about quick ratio and we have uh, uh, the quick ratio, we deduct the inventories as part of current set. So therefore, we need to add the information dalam our statement here 
stating that uh, lower ability to pay short obligations on time without uh, relying relying on inventories as compared to industrial average. So again, all of this information is here. Here at the bottom, yeah. So when you add on the name of the companies and the point of reference you compare against, okay, that's your contribution lah, for your assessment. Okay, to identify whether you understand or not, because not every ratios the higher the better. Eh? Just to let you know, some ratios uh, lower is better. Okay, but so far we have both quick ratio, sorry, uh, the current ratio and the quick ratio, the higher, the better on the performance of the company. Okay, so that's number two, quick ratio. Still the same, current set, current liabilities, but now we deduct inventory. So the third one, okay, still under leverage, sorry, under liquidity, we have networking capital. Okay, networking capital. So... You will see here the formula is still the same, eh? information is still the same, but <clears throat> the nature how we utilize information is slightly different. Kalau tadi we divide eh, for our current ratio, it's current assets divided by current liabilities. But for networking capital, what we need to do, we just minus it. Okay, current assets minus current liabilities. Okay, so again, higher ratio is better. In this case, higher the ringgit values, it's more desirable. So the answer is in ringgit because we are not using dollar signs, but in ringgit like I said. So the higher the better, which is positive values. And this would be an absolute measure of liquidity. So that is the amount of excess that you have when we talk about uh, liquidity. Lah. Okay, so untuk soalan ni, the question doesn't ask us to find networking capital. Okay, because there's no... Reference here, there's no ratios with related to networking capital. But for the sake of illustration purposes, again, I to you guys in here, the networking capital will be current assets minus current liabilities. So the current asset just now was 8.8601. And the current liabilities is 1080. Okay, so seven hundred and eighty thousand. Okay, so that's the value, okay, of the networking capital. It's positive eh, because the current asset is more than current liabilities, so this value is positive values. Okay. Um, doctor, yeah. What if what if uh the company yeah we are analyzing it, uh for the wait wait for the network capital wait, wait networking wait, capital wait. Uh, networking capital is uh it got negative value. Also the 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 company that we are comparing with also mm -hmm. got the negative value. What will happen? I mean, when we compare, with, so the, because. For all liquidity, eh, the higher the better. So obviously when we compare both negative, obviously there's one somehow better off kan, as compared to the other one. So you can compare as better, but it's not the best among the rest, right? But if, when we compare, you just compare between the two parties. Eh. So there's always one party better than the other. So that's why when you comment, you never use the word best or highest. Okay, we just can compare comparatively, eh, you use the word lower, higher, or better, or worse. Okay, worse than W-O-R-S-E, not W-O-R-S-T. So that, that, that words yeah, you can use when we do comparison. Okay, so, but obviously when we talk about networking capital, we want it to be positive, sepatutnya lah. Once you have networking capital negative, then automatically when you calculate ratio on top here, everything will be lower than one. Any Everything here will be lower than one. Because mathematically, you know lah, if the 
uh, numerator on top is high, uh, sorry, lower than the denominator at the bottom here. Okay, your, your ratio will be lower than one already, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 maybe. Okay, so automatically we know the company has problems uh, if the ratio is less than one. And this automatically will be negative. Okay. So for the sake of um, uh, during the test or exams, yeah, usually the, the question seldom give you a negative. And to be honest with you, most of the time they will not ask you to calculate the net capital. Okay, they just focus on these two ratios, yeah. current ratio and also quick ratio. So that's why for this example. Okay, so they just ask you to find current versus quick. That's it. Okay, but your question tadi valid juga lah. Okay, kalau di, both companies negative, katakan. So obviously, which ever companies closer to zero is better than the, the other one. Okay. So that's our first category. Our first category. Right. So first category, we have three ratios. I recap current ratio, quick ratio, and also networking capital. So let's move on to the second category. Okay, second category, which is uh, leverage. Okay, so leverage ratios is quite the opposite of liquidity. Lah. Kalau liquidity tadi, the higher the ratio, the better for the company. But for the leverage ratios, most of the ratios, we want to get it as low as possible. Okay, maybe not all, eh, but most of the ratios, we want it to be as low as possible. <clears throat> so here, the purpose of leverage, you can see, lah, you can measure the financial structure of the company, how dependable the company with debt, okay. uh, the ability of the company to service or to pay their debts and also their interests. So everything here leverage, when we talk about leverage so ratio, it's all about the debt and also the debt payment ability. Okay, the debt level, we want to see how company involved with debt. And on top of that, whether this company has ability to pay debt or not. Okay, so this ratio is very important for investor, for investor from outside. Eh? They want to know this before they invest. Okay, how dependent this company uh, with debt. So, kalau company tu has a lot of profits pun, tapi kalau debt dia banyak, there's a problem with regards to the structure of the company. So, as an investor, they they want to know this juga. Okay, because the high degree of indebtedness, okay, obviously will involve with high risk. Okay, because they have, uh, when they have high debt, they kena bayar hutang dia every month. And when they have to pay the debt every month, they have uh, fixed payment obligation. So they have to pay obligations payment every month. Okay, especially if they have level of debt too high, right? they have to pay interest high as well. So that's the, the risk factor element lah, when we talk about library ratios. Okay, so another three ratios. Kalau tadi ada tiga kan? for liquidity similarly leverage also will have three so we have debt ratio okay debt to equity ratio and times interested okay so before we move to the first one debt ratio only they have alternative name the name of the debt ratio is debt debt to asset ratio so this is the alternative name okay but in short they we just call them debt ratio Okay, but uh, in total, we can call them debt to asset ratio. Okay, by knowing the full name here, debt to asset ratio, we can know the formula actually. Okay, we can know the formula. So when we set debt to asset ratio, it's basically debt divided by asset. Okay, total debt lah, total debt divided by total assets. Similarly. Debt to equity from from the name itself, we know the formula is total debt again. But now divided by total equity. Okay, so ratios, some of the ratios are we can know the formula by looking at their names. Okay, but not all lah. 
Kita tadi current ratio, maybe the word current indicates kita ada current asset, current liabilities. Okay, here we have debt to asset and debt to equity. Okay, so some of the ratios uh, can be useful ataupun can be helpful in the form of knowing the formulas. Okay, so let's look at the first one tadi. Debt ratio, eh? So it measures the proportion of the firm's total debt to its total assets. Kalau I draw the T account just now, kalau you get earlier, we have assets here. We have liabilities, which is our debt. I do this saja juga. And we have equity at the bottom here. So this ratio, debt ratio, is basically to know the portion on top here. Okay, this portion on top here, top right corner ni, we divide with the whole total assets on this side. Okay, top right, divide by the whole assets on the left. So therefore, the total asset ni, you don't have to calculate. If you remember tadi, eh, from our question, this one, you don't have to calculate the total assets because total assets is already here. Okay, we need to know the top part je. Okay, top part ni can be top here or can be somewhere down here juga lah sebab we have two parts kan, liabilities and equity on at the bottom. Okay, so if we go back to this question. Okay, I move on to the third one lah kat sini. Okay, capital terdah tak kira, which is that ratio. Yeah, that ratio. So the formula was total debt by total assets. Okay. So still both, eh? both can be found in the balance sheets, which is our first statement on question. Okay. So I label tadi eh, from account payable until other current liability as our current liabilities. So when we want to find total debt, it's equivalent to total liability. So this is just one part of it, current liabilities. Okay, if you remember dalam liabilities, we have current and then we have long-term liabilities. So therefore, to find the total debt or total liabilities, this amount 1080, you have to add with long-term liabilities as well. So the, the rest of information on the right hand side here, we have three more information. We have long term debt, common shares, and retain earnings. Okay, so this is the way the one that you have to be careful. Okay, you need to know which one is long term liabilities, which one's considered equity. Okay, so two elements yang tinggal. Okay, so I remember that, but anyway. From the name tadi, I have discussed for long-term liabilities among the common terms that they use, obviously long-term debt, bond, mortgages, or higher purchase. Itu antara common terms or even satu lagi debentures maybe. Okay, debentures. These are uh, among the terms that they use for long-term liabilities. Okay, yang lain macam common shares, preferred shares, retained earnings, capital, those are equities okay so in this case these two i like that city the common shares and retaining these are equity okay these two so long term debt one million this is your on long term liabilities okay long term liabilities okay so therefore common plus long term will be your total debt so one was at zero only you plus with one million so your total debt will be 2.08 million okay so that's your total debt all right because equity this part okay so your total assets this one you don't have to calculate but it's already mentioned here four million So, zero eight zero divided by four million. Okay, again, sometimes we tak ingat. Okay, 
Is it times? Is it percentage? Is it days? Go back to here. Okay, that ratio, guys. Okay, that ratio is in percentage. So therefore, you have, you convert it in percentage. Yeah? You times one hundred, so you'll be fifty percent. Okay, it will be fifty two percent. Okay, so again, we compare against the industry average. So in this question, the industry average is 45%. Okay, but this company, Sunrise Corporation, has 52%, okay, which is higher than the industry average. Okay, but again, remember, eh, not every ratio, the higher the better. Okay, so knee Sunrise better than industry average. But if you recall, I said earlier for this debt ratio, this is about... Uh, the structure of the company and dependability of this company towards debt. So therefore, the higher the ratio reflect the higher amount of debt to finance assets. Therefore, the higher the risk. So if you want to comment, I tak tulis semua ratio, I tulis jawapan eh. So I hope you dah understand the concept. Kalau tak lagi, sampai ke tujuh pun tak habis nanti. So at the end of your calculations, you just comment lah. Cyrus Corporation has a high which uh higher basically I'm trying to say Cyrus Corporation has a higher amount of debt to finance its assets as compared to the industry average. Later to you. Okay. I recap really, eh? Cyrus Corporation has a higher amount of debt to finance its assets as compared to the industry average. Okay, that's your comment for that ratio. Okay, so that's the first ratio under the average. Okay, under the leverage. Next one, uh, kita ada leverage. We have, sorry, under leverage, kita ada debt to equity ratio. Okay, kalau tadi kita ambil liability or debt on top here, we divide with assets on the left-hand side total. But for the next one later on, for the second one yang kita akan buat later ni, debt to equity is actually this part. Total debts on top here, we divide with the total equity at the bottom. Okay, so we are focusing only on the right hand side of our balance sheets. Okay, so this is the ratio. Total debt divided by total equity. <clears throat> so the ratio is higher than one or higher than uh, 100% lah basically will indicate that the company are dependent on debt. Okay, dependent on debt. And again, the higher the ratio, the worse it be. So we are looking for lower ratios. Okay, sama macam debt ratio tadi, the lower the better. Because the higher, the higher the risk. Similar like debt to equity, the lower ataupun the lesser is more desirable. We want it to be as less as possible, as, as low as possible. Okay, so if we go back again to the question, okay, lepas ni maybe I tak tunjuk lah aku eh, <coughs> how to get the information. Let's do. Before, I show you what's up, ada, ada comparison debt to equity on that. I just calculate yeah, debt to equity. So it's total debt divided by equity. So the total debt is similar as above, 2080. You don't have to calculate anymore. And the equity, if you recall, I highlighted earlier this part. The equity is these two. So the total equity will be 1920. Okay, 1920. So two zero is zero. Okay, by one by two zero times hundred percent. So it's about hundred and eight percent. Okay, hundred and eight point three percent. So it's high. Okay, above the hundred percent. Eh? So obviously, this company are dependent on uh, debt too much. The amount of debt is more than the equity. Again. So therefore. 
uh, the, the the usage of amount of debt against the equity is more. Okay. Therefore, the capital structure uh, lean towards debt driven, ataupun debt dependent. <coughs> okay. And the last one under leverage would be times interest in. Okay, times interest in. Okay, so this is the only ratio under leverage which indicates the higher the ratio, the better. Okay, this is totally the opposite from the first two. Okay, ingat eh, for times interest in, the higher, the better. This part. Higher ratio is desirable. Because untuk times interest in, we are looking at their payment. Remember, under leverage, we want to see the debt level. Second is about the payment ability. So times interest earned will look at the payment ability. So therefore, when we want to look at ability, you want it to be as high as possible. Tapi dari segi level, you want it to be as low as possible. So here, the answer will be in times again, hence the name time interest earned. So it indicates that the higher the ratio, they have ability to meet loan charges. Okay, they have ability to meet loan charges. Better lah, can have better uh, ability to meet loan charges. So, back to the question. Okay. Numbering ni dah out sikit lah. Because that to equity ratio, we can compare because it's not part of the question actually. Number four here. Okay, number four. Um, yeah. We are talking about uh, times interest earned, eh? TIE, times interest earned. So the times interest earned, the formula is earning before interest and taxes divided by tax. Eh? Eh, tax, but divided by interest. Okay, we divide with interest. This part, eh? the need before interest and taxes divide with interest. Okay, and the answer in time. So whenever the answer in times, you just divide. Eh? We don't have to multiply with anything. Okay, so this is our first ratio that we have to utilize our uh, income statement. Okay, so our income statement kat sini. All right, and this is uh, one of a trick question trick in the sense that kalau you ingat dalam income statement I, 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 I mentioned earlier we have multiple levels of profits we have uh, gross profits we have earning before interest and taxes we have earning before tax and we have earning after tax okay so we have four levels but in this question kalau you perasan I highlight kat sini eh, we have the first one gross profit we have EBT and we have earning after tax so EBIT is unknown untuk soalan ni eh, for this question. There's no EBIT mentioned. So if you use this one, 580,000, this is wrong. Okay, salah. So I think salah about formula dia is earning before interest and taxes. Divide by interest. So interest kat sini, 120,000. Oh. Okay, so how to find EBIT? So EBIT is hidden somewhere. Okay, tak payah somewhere lah. It's actually here. Atas, in between of these two. Alright. So, how to find this? There are two ways how to find it. Either you use a uh, top-bottom approach. And then you, you can calculate from top to bottom. Or you can use bottom-up. Either way, you can use it. Okay, because you know the nature. Bila kita from top to bottom, we minus lah. When we use bottom-up, we add. Okay, mathematic rules. Very simple. Okay, kalau kita tengok from top to bottom, where can we find EBIT? It's actually uh, minus eh, we have to minus eh, kalau top to bottom, kalau ni kita kena add. So we have to take uh, gross profit, okay, gross profit, 
minus with operating expenses. If you remember lah, operating expenses, one of them is about selling and admin cost. So 4.4 .4 million divided by 3.7. So 4.4 minus 3.7 million, you get 700,000. Okay, 700,000. Or you can use a reverse type, which is from bottom up. Before EBIT, after EBIT, we have EBT. Because EBIT, we minus with interest, then we get EBT. Okay, so if we do reverse from EBT 580, and then we add with 120, okay, you will get the same answer, 700,000. Okay, 580 plus 120,000, so money EBIT, EBT plus interest, then you get EBIT of 700,000 as well. Okay, so that's a trick as here. Okay, so this is where you need to know the, the structure of your statement. Okay, ni tadi ada mention, ada eh, tadi kalau you rajin, you buka balik ni nanti, dalam, dalam, mention apa tadi, faham eh, jap eh, bear with me one second. Kat sini lah, kat sini. Structure ni. Okay, it's there. To find it, how to find it. <clears throat> okay, so if we go back to here, we know EBIT kita 700,000. Okay. Our earning before interest and taxes is 700,000. And our interest is 120,000. <clears throat> so it's about 5.83 times. Okay, 5.83 times. Okay, so how to comment again? Look at the industry average. So industry average is about 7.8 times. So this company has lesser ataupun lower amount. So obviously for this time is interested, the higher the better. Okay, ingat eh? Debt to assets or debt ratio and debt to equity, the lower the better. But for time is interested, the higher the better. Okay, so in this case, the company has less. So there has less, lesser ability as compared to the industry average. So if you want to comment, you can specify. Okay, Sarah's Corporation has lower ability to meet loan charges. Okay. Uh, and they can reverse us, but they lower it. And has higher risk of default, default as compared to the industry average. Okay, so that's how you uh, analyze based on times interest rate. <coughs> Okay, so we have done two categories, liquidity and also leverage. So, let me present the question. First part, they asked us to calculate. Okay, we've done the calculation I've, I've showed you earlier. And on top of that, at every ratio, I comment. So that's why the analysis part for B, they asked us to comment based on liquidity. And so far, we've done about leverage as well okay so we have two more sections which is activity and profitability but by looking at the time now i think i'll stop here for today i can drag so i'll stop here for today yeah i'll stop here for today with regards to financial ratio analysis so hopefully you have you have you understand the the, the statements itself Okay, so this would be the simplified version, eh? Okay, simplified version. So they take the label, similar like the income statement. Okay, simplified version. Kalau actual, maybe longer, eh, in terms of the information. Okay, so okay, I nak share dengan you tadi apa? Eh? My guru tadi. Eh? Okay, so for those young tak the group, this is the time for you to find your group.
Okay, so this is our page for PFM E3023, yeah. Financial management. Okay, tak, tak sure ada nak tengok ke belum. Under the assignment section. Okay, there's one active one. Kita letak ni 21st of May. Okay, so this is a common, common assignment lah for all groups. So instruction ada kat sini, you can download kat sini nanti. Alright, so it's all about the ratios kalau tak salah. So you have, whereby you have to find two companies. Eh. Okay, so there's information kat sini uh, from a group of four. Eh. So money yang odd tu nanti let me know, but by default, it's four in a group. Okay, four in a group. So you have to choose two companies from a similar industry. So therefore, to book the companies, okay, to book the companies, you can uh, uh, register with me. Yeah. So using our WhatsApp group, okay, using our WhatsApp group, first come first services, register your interest on the two companies, must be from the same industry. And my suggestion is to choose Berhad companies. Okay, Berhad company. So that's why I got to make sure your lecturer approves your choice. Eh? So one year, contact me. Ataupun we use our WhatsApp group too. Okay, register two companies of your choice. Must be within the same industry. And I said, choose Berhad companies. Because Berhad companies, the information uh, available online. Okay, the financial statements are dalam uh, their own website. Lah. And nanti you watch lah, uh, the information. Okay, so you can use your own interpretation of information and then prepare. You have to prepare two things, the reports and also uh, video presentation. Okay, so they letak sini that live 21st of May. So banyak masa lagi. Alright, but yeah, so we've done two categories so far. We have uh, liquidity and we have leverage. So as a, as a starting point, uh, find your own group for in a group then register the two companies that you want must be within the same industry okay example uh, sebab kalau boleh kata jangan guna bank eh. so i give you example bank okay maybank versus cimb contohnya right but don't use that one two companies sudah so tak boleh pilih okay maybank versus cimb so you choose two other companies within the same industry <coughs> Okay, so you can read the information here lah under the assignment. Then the video study yang ada yang tanya, I'm not sure whether your view will be the same kat dalam web conference ini. You usually uh, apa? join kat sini kan for so that your attendance will be recorded kat sini. And I'm not sure whether you can view kat sini or not this part. And this will be the video yang I dah upload. Okay, so our first and our second. So today belum habis lagi, so I tak, tak upload lagi lah. So once it's available, I can upload dekat sini. Okay, nanti let me know eh. Can you view this section or not from your your side? Sebab kalau dah dekat sini, I will not upload it here anymore. Sebab sekarang, I upload dekat sini. Dan ni material eh. I sekarang upload dekat ni. Record session ni, I letak dekat web bags eh. Then kalau kat sini nanti you have to use the password and what not kat sini. I, I lupa letak link yang 15 tu kat sini eh. Because saya dah upload kat sana tadi eh. So let me know lah kalau boleh tengok kat sana lah. Kata I kena continue updating kat sini. Ada eh. Okay then you check dekat sini je lah for the videos. Just click kat sini dan ada, ada, ada YouTube videos kat sini dan you can play. And yeah, just like normal videos, macam biasa lah kan. Alright, so for today's session nanti kat sini. Okay. Uh, right, so on top of this assignment, okay, just to make make yourself familiarize juga uh, dengan uh, statements eh. I had a simple assignment. Uh, 
minta tolong di all buat. Uh, this is basically a simple task ya. Yeah. Nanti I upload lah, I tak upload lagi soalan ni. Okay, the same group of four yang you you pernah pilih nanti. You tak payah analyze apa-apa. I just want you to find information related to GLCs. Government link companies in Malaysia. Okay, so you need to do this first before we do the analysis part later. Right, so <clears throat> you need to find government link companies in Malaysia, GLCs. Okay, you need to understand that when we talk about government link companies, it is owned either majority or minoritily by government, by government of Malaysia. Okay, either by their investment arm like Kazana, contohnya. So companies, the the most the most common government link companies would be like companies like Petronas, for example, TM, for example. So those are government link companies. So what I want you to find from these government link companies is this information. Okay, I tak letak in numbers lah, lah. So the total asset, remember dalam dalam balance sheet tadi ada total assets, ada total liabilities. And from there, you can find dalam equity dia ada capital, right? And then uh, dalam income statement ada revenues, ada expenses, ada tax, and finally ada net profits. Simple je, right? So we have 10, uh, 10 categories here, 10 industries. So initially masa tu ada 40 orang, I think still 40 orang kot, I tak ingat. Our members. So I, I've divided into 10 different categories kat sini. Okay, 10 different categories. So each group can register which one you want. Okay, so this also can help you in determining which two companies you want to choose later on. Okay, you boleh guna GLC yang you nak ataupun you can use any other companies later lah. Tapi these are the industries that you can choose from. Okay, so focus yang ni dulu yang tadi tu kita ignore kejap. We we hold that thought first. We are we are using this one first. This one no analysis pun. Just I I want I want the data je. So therefore you need to use Microsoft Excel. Okay, jarang your your assignment guna Microsoft Excel kan. So this is uh, your your time to to test your Microsoft Excel punya presentation punya skill. Okay, how to present to me your Microsoft Excel new data whereby you list down all GLC company according to these categories. Okay, and show me all this information for two years, 2018 and 2019 only. Because 2020, some of the data is not available yet and somehow 2020, the data might not be accurate enough because we have the pandemic in 2020. So some of the data, the assets, the profits and everything might be uh, misleading somehow. Okay. So I will upload this information again uh, in my guru. So this one will not require much time, I think. Kalau you, you split your, your time in four ni. Okay. So I don't have the list. Okay. Try to find as much companies as possible within this industry. Okay, must be GLC only. Eh? I will check the companies you selected. Okay, you, you can try Google. Okay, company of GLCs according to this industry. <coughs> okay, mesti ada telecommunication. Contoh tadi bagi TM kan. So TM is already part of this. Okay, ada some other companies masuk dalam consumer product, construction, so on. So all of these lists, you boleh refer dalam Bursa Malaysia. So this are uh, Bursa Malaysia's uh, industry punya labeling. So you can check kat situ lah. Which are the companies. And try to find the GLCs kat situ. Okay. So I will upload this later. And then I can put deadline kat situ jugalah. Okay, so don't have to analyze, don't have to comment anything, just like what we've done tadi. Tak payah, eh? I just need the data in Excel without any explanation pun. Okay. So, I will put this in uh, in my guru as well. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. So, I think I'll stop here.
Apa sikit tadi So We will continue with the second part of ratios So far baru dua, we have three more categories We'll conclude the ratios next week Right. So thank you very much and inshallah I'll see you guys next week.